Now, I just want you to uh, have a listen to a lady called Marie Edwards. Now, Marie's baby daughter, Jasmine, died in 1993 after an operation that should have been simple. Uh, she became one of the babies who lost their lives in what became known as the Bristol Heart Baby Scandal. At the time, the family lived in Melksham, and in 2004, Marie gave BBC Wiltshire what she hoped would be her last media interview, as a report into the scandal set out what had gone wrong and what needed to be done. But now that's changed, because earlier this week, the Department of Health suggested that many of the 11 paediatric cardi cardiac wards around the country should be closed and replaced with a much smaller number of wards, which would become centres of excellence, something that had been suggested in the original report. So because of that, Marie's now speaking out again. She's been telling me what happened to baby Jasmine. Yeah, um, she was um, transferred to hospital, refusal to thrive, and they sent her over to um, the Bristol Children's Hospital um, where she went, underwent a small uh, procedure to find out how her heart was working and was found to have anonymous left coronary artery, which is the small vessel uh, which pumps fresh blood round the heart, fresh deox uh, oxidised blood round the heart, and it wasn't um, it wasn't attached correctly. So it was a minor procedure to correct, and uh, the outcome of that would have been full life expectancy. So this is what happened to her then. Sadly, yeah. it, it was completely out of the blue to you. Um, yes, totally. We, there was no cardiac um, anonymous in either of uh, Dad's family's history or mine. And at the time, how long was it before you realised that, that this all fitted into the, to the bigger picture of what was happening at Bristol? I basically had suspicions shortly after because of the General Medical Council's investigations into Wishart and Desmana's work and um, my child's name wasn't there but her date of birth and date of death was. So that's where I had my first warnings of possibly she was part of medical negligence um, claim. You were one of the families affected when you, you realised that um, some of the organs had also been removed from Jasmine and, and, and you didn't know that had happened. I don't know how I had the information, but I just knew that her heart had been taken and on investigating that at St um, Michael's Hospital. I retrieved my daughter's heart back, but then to find that it was the wrong one. Now, there was a review afterwards mm. and lots of recommendations because this was such a high-profile case, what had gone on at the time. Had that enabled you, the result of that, that enabled you to, to get some answers and move on with your life? Most definitely, because we all felt um, that something needed to change. Um, looking back on it now, I wish that possibly have gone down the lines of corporate manslaughter charges um, due to the fact that nothing has actually happened. Um, and basically £50 million worth of British taxpayers' money went into the world's largest public inquiry investigating how so many babies died at Bristol. And I'm sat here now absolutely horrified, mortified of what, what's happened, you know. Well, I, I know at the time you said to us that y you thought you would have given your last interview because we spoke to you a lot back in the 1990s. So why in particular do you feel so strongly again now? Uh, the amount of effort, time um, that the families put into actually trying to correct the systemic failings within the NHS ultimately to the price of our children and their legacy has just been a very very difficult time should we, <clears throat> we just talk about this this new no that's fine yeah, yeah the new the new the report new, yeah let, let, um, let's talk about this report then because that just to, to put it in some context uh, this is one of the recommendations that we've had before um, to say totally. that there should be fewer fewer centers yeah, I mean, it's key that um, from the public inquiry, we basically had uh, the chairperson, Mr Kennedy, write um, documentation on the amendments that, um, you know, have to be put in place. And I've not seen it in the media until March when four babies died um, at the John Radcliffe Hospital. Now, 
I'm beside myself with with where to go next. Back uh, after I'd lost Jasmine before the public inquiry, I set up uh, Fragile Angels to help the children that were left organ damaged and also was going to campaign for safer cardiac surgery. And heart babies, they are quite rare. So having a s- a small, smaller centres, um, having a higher volume of babies coming through is key to keep a surgeon at the top of his skills. The surgeons have to do um, a minimum of 100 to 200 operations a year. And these having so many centres, 11 across the country, means that some surgeons are only seeing you know, 25 to 30 babies in a year, which isn't enough. Marie, if this recommendation is now carried out and there are fewer centres, will that enable you uh, to rest and and say, yes, I've now got the best I can out of this awful situation, that something positive is happening for the future? Um, yes, a long, long wait though, and I just, you know, fear that as we're speaking, you know, Bristol is happening again somewhere else. So, yes, it is good news, but it's all, all much, much too late. It's a very moving story, isn't it? You can't help but feel for Marie and her family. As Marie mentioned, she had put campaigning on the issue to rest until hearing about the recent deaths of four children who'd had heart surgery at the John Radcliffe in Oxford. That's one of the 11 wards currently involved in this national review. Well, we have been told by the John Radcliffe Hospital that the four children who died were all operated on by the same person, but there's no suggestion the surgeon himself made any errors. It could quite simply just be coincidence, given the risks involved in heart surgery. However, while an independent review is undertaken, all All heart surgery involving children has been suspended. That report coming back in July. BBC Wiltshire at seven minutes to eight. I just want to try and put this in context, really. The implications of this national review, which could well see a reduction in the number of children's heart surgery centres so that expertise can be concentrated in fewer hospitals. BBC West's health correspondent Matthew Hill was the first to report on the original heart scandal in Bristol back in the early 1990s. Uh, Matthew's with us now. Matthew, this um, report um, about better quality centres but less of them. Why is this the conclusion they've come to? Well, it's not surprising. I mean, it's essentially what Kennedy was saying 10 years ago, that we have, as Marie says, too many centres doing um, too few operations. I mean, Oxford being being one of those. Um, and it's this something which I highlighted several years ago in, in a documentary. Um, and there was a, a, Mun- a review done by Jim Munro from Southampton um, in about 2003, and it seemed to recommend the sort of state things stay as as they were um, a lot of people uh, i know in the health service feel that that, that there was quite a lot of that um protectionism going on you know people trying to protect their own units um but now this report clearly sees that the way forward is to have centers uh, where you have at least four surgeons uh, four you know pediatric cardiac surgeons um you know we do have i mean centers uh, in oxford only only has 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 one pediatric cardiac surgeon the the other one is uh, an adult doing pediatric surgery um, so, um, yes, it's, it's, it's not surprising that this uh, recommendation is going to be made. So are Wiltshire's nearest centres, are they likely to be threatened? Well, um, I think Oxford is probably the, the most vulnerable one. Um, Bristol, um, having, having spoken to uh, the surgeon who turned Bristol around after the heart scandal, who's now retired, Ash Pawadi, um, and he thinks very much that Bristol could be slogging it out with um, Southampton, ultimately, as to who uh, carries out the, the surgery. I think the essential prerequisite is a smaller number of units should be doing a larger number of patients. In the southwest, we have Southampton and Bristol, and Bristol also drains uh, southern Wales. If Wales becomes independent, they might want to hold on to their entire practice, in which case it will go to Cardiff, and Southampton and Bristol will not have any choice but to merge. Uh, essentially, it will mean merging of those two departments depending on a variety of factors, including the ability of these units to accommodate uh, another unit. That's Ash Powad. Matthew, though, if Bristol or, or Oxford or even Southampton uh, does close or there's some merger involved, surely 
that could then be distressing for parents because they'd have long journeys to Southampton, say, or even further afield. Well, don't forget the, the bulk of their treatment will still be done locally because um, if, if they do close, then these centres will still become centres of excellence for uh, cardiology so that patients can be assessed locally, managed locally. And, and operations um, don't happen very often. You know, they're, they're pretty rare. They're about 3,500 in the UK per year. Um, so it's for these rare events that they are proposing that patients and families have to travel further. No doubt they would be put up properly. Um, but it's something which um, Ashpawadi thinks is a, a ridiculous argument if you want the best standard of care. The unit will have to provide uh, adequate accommodation. And uh, I came from Melbourne, uh, in, um, and we used to have patients coming from Perth, which is a four hours flight. If it was my child, I would have no hesitation in traveling across the country as long as I believe that he or she got a good service. And I think that that, that reasoning is rubbish. And Matthew, finally and, and briefly, um, this review that we've, we've talked about, the recommendation there be fewer centres, when will uh, a conclusion be reached on that? Well, certainly not during the next uh, couple of weeks in the run-up to the election because the politicians will no doubt get involved. <laughs> We're talking uh, a few months off, I think. OK, Matthew, thank you. Matthew Hill, BBC West's health correspondent.